back to what I was saying, you can tell that everything is shifting in our world. There's so much going on there. I mean, you really have to focus like you never have focused before. You have to pull on your tribe. You have to pull on your community. You have to be able to do it to where you're able to really, let's stop all video right now, um, so that we're able to really just dive right in and, and get the things that we need for our business. And so this month, our Monday classes are going to be open to the public members, um, of course, it's free to members, and the um, public can come in for a very low fee to get the information that's needed for us to continue to grow our businesses. There have been millions of businesses that are not surviving through this this pandemic you know and so we want to do our very best here at this network to make sure that we are continuing to thrive and we're going to make it through here and so today we're kicking off talking about finances different things you can do um, to get the grants that are out there ways to make sure your business credit is where it needs to be so that you can qualify for um, some of the different loans that are out there we need to make sure we're getting this information that is needed um, prior to the whole um, technology issue here and the sound issue i was talking about the giveaway and all that we are doing we need you to continue to share and let your followers know about the giveaway let them know what we're doing here at the network and get word out send in your videos i'm going to make sure even if you're not a winner we're still putting you out to all of the thousands of followers that we have about who you are and what it is that you do um and so that's just so important that we continue to stay engaged we want to do something like this on an ongoing basis here at the network where we're able to just give back pay it forward and and, and be a blessing to those in our community and those that follow us um, on social media. Okay, so I got my, my little um, business out the way. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get started with today. I have an amazing guest with us. I, look, anybody that's helping to secure the bag automatically gets the title money lady in my world. So this is, this is our money lady today. She's helping us learn more about loans, about funding, about business credit, and we're going to dive into that. And I want you guys to have your questions ready. Um, that we can go over it towards the end. She has an amazing offer going on, Jen told me about. So we're going to get started. So Latoya Jackson, I want you to introduce yourself. Let us know who you are. Can you get your screen down a little bit? Your, um, is it possible to get, get you? Can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Are we able to get you down some? I'm not You're sure. right at the bottom of your screen. Let's see. Or can your chair go up? Y'all know I'm, I'm the beauty expert, right? Oh, 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 Aesthetically, oh, I'm like. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe that'll help. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm like, just come up a little bit so I can see, see you. Okay. Yes, in all your splendor. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, awesome. So please tell us more about yourself. And then I have a couple questions I want to ask you and then we'll, we'll just dive right in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm extremely happy to be on your platform. And thank you to everyone who is participating today. Uh, my name is Latoya Jackson. I'm the founder and CEO of Excel Capital Group, and we help entrepreneurs get funding for their business. Um, there are two ways that we help entrepreneurs get funding. One way is if you qualify for business credit cards, business loans, and lines of credit. And outside of that, we also teach entrepreneurs how to build business credit with their EIN. And that's not attached to their personal credit score, and you don't have to put up a personal guarantee. So that's how we help entrepreneurs get funding for their business. Awesome. And so that you just said a lot really quick. <laughs> and I'm yes. sure there, there's a process to that. You know, I'm um, so one of the things I do here at the network, not only am I the founder, but I, I work a lot on branding. Uh, we met some years ago in yes. the Chicago market. You were killing it back then, killing it now. 
So I was so excited um, when we sit with the team and just talk about different guests to have on that your name came up. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is she doing these days? And so <laughs> we saw all the amazing things you had going on. I was like, yeah, absolutely. We have to have her on. Um, but one, one of the things that comes to mind with what I do here at the network, I help women with their brands. And so in helping them with developing their brands and coming up with, you know, what their offers are going to be, how they want to show up in the marketplace, their looks, their logo, their website. Of course, we start to go into, um, we, we hit sometimes these barriers because they have financial issues that come up, you know? And so they, they, they have an amazing brand, business may be struggling, um, meeting transactions, right? They're not seeing as much transactions because we all know it takes a few years before you get out of red and to the black. The first three to five years, you're just dumping. You're, you're investing in your brand. You're investing in your business in hopes to see that return and that momentum start to build. And so the conversation naturally, because I'm around business a lot, business credit comes up. Some are privy to it, some are not. Right when it comes to I talk to them about a dun, what you, do you have your Duns and Bradstreet number? You know we have these conversation and one of my members, um, Adrian, she's an amazing businesswoman in real estate like yourself. Several property management companies and several um, uh, locations where she does commercial real estate, and we're talking about it. Unfortunately, she got into this program with a lady that was super expensive um, to build her business credit. And when we had the conversation, I was like, I said, Adrian, you know, you, you could do some of that legwork for free. And she just didn't know. And so this call today it is so near and dear to my heart and important. I have one at least once a year about this topic specifically, as well as um, legal matters, um, to make sure women know what's available to them, right? Um, and so can you just talk a little bit about what is a Duns and Bradstreet number? Um, you know, what are the things that these women can do to get started um, with building their business credit today? Excellent, excellent question. Um, so in order for me to explain what a Duns number is, I have to explain what Dun and Bradstreet is. And I'm wow. glad that you brought this up because this is actually why I started this business. I was at an entrepreneurship uh, conference and there was a lady, an entrepreneur there, she raised her hand and she asked the CPA, she said, well, what is a DUNS number and how can I use that to get funding for my business? And so the CPA told her, oh, you don't need to worry about the DUNS number. You know, when you go to a bank, they're gonna ask you for a personal, you know, a, a, a 720 personal credit score. They're gonna ask you if you've been in business two years, they're gonna ask you for your business tax returns. They're gonna want you to make at least 250K a year in revenue. They want your profit and loss statements. They may want some collateral. And at that moment, I knew, I'm like, that's not 100% true. If you go to a bank, then yes, they're gonna ask for all of those things in order for you to qualify for funding. But I knew because I got business credit, you know, I got 40,000 in business credit within two months. I didn't have, you know, I wasn't in business two years. I didn't have, you know, strong business revenues. You know, I didn't have any of that stuff that that lady was talking about. So I knew that there are other ways to get access to capital um, that doesn't necessarily just mean going to a bank. So basically a Dunn's number, well, basically a Dunn's number is generated by Dunn and Bradstreet. Dunn and Bradstreet is the oldest credit reporting bureau uh, ever. They were started back in 1849 in New York City, and basically they are a database of businesses that report payment history with businesses that choose to do business with each other. So they have over 200 million uh, companies and over 200 nations worldwide that they report on, and a DUNS number is basically your nine-digit number that identifies your business in their database of businesses. Kind of similar to like your EIN, right? That represents your business to the IRS um, with other businesses. So a DUNS number is literally just a nine digit number that is given to you by Dun & Bradstreet to identify your business in their database of over 200 million businesses. And they simply report payment history with businesses who, who choose to do business with each other, if that makes sense. 
So that's where that comes from. But it's, it's a lot more to it than just that. Some people say, well, how can I get a DUNS number and how can I use that for funding? Well, there's three business credit bureaus. It's not just Dun & Bradstreet. You also have Experian, you also have um, Equifax, and there's another one called Credit Safe. And you have to establish business credit with the three major business corporations. You can't just establish credit with just one. You have to do it with all three because all of them serve different purposes. You know, when you're building with Experian, that can help you get SBA loans. So each, each credit bureau for businesses have a different purpose and you want to establish credit with each one of them, if that makes sense. That does, that does make sense. Um, establishing credit with them. Can you talk about that process when you say establish credit with them? Are, are people getting on phone calls with them? Are they calling? Are they emailing? Are they, are they having to put any money up to get started? What should an individual, this is why this call is so important, and what should individuals expect to, in that process? To not get taken advantage of, I want to make it clear. Got it. Okay. So there are, well, let me step back and, and explain what business credit is and I'll talk about the steps to get started. So business credit is really credit that's in a business name, right? It has its own business credit profile and it has its own score. So it's totally separate from the personal side, right? On the personal side, you know, you can have a 720 score, right? That's considered a great score. It goes from 300 to 350 to 800, 850. On the, pers on the business side, the scores go from one to 100 and you wanna get an 80 um, and that's considered a great business credit score. That's a Paydex score. That's what it's called with Dun & Bradstreet. So business credit is really like starting over. Um, you're establishing business credit in the name of the company. So what that means is it has its own profile, it has its own score, and you are basically building business in the business name and you are judged on how quickly you pay your company invoices on the personal side you're judged on you know your utilization your new credit inquiries the mix of credit that you have right you're judged on your credit score is comprised of all five of those components on the business credit side it's based on how fast you pay your company invoices so can you imagine you know just being graded on how quickly you pay your invoices versus you know your mix of credit your debt utilization and your inquiries right so business credit i want to explain business credit is the process and business funding is the goal so you are taking steps to establish business credit and there's four levels of building business credit so you ask what can a person do to get started and how much does it cost now i teach these in my my memberships and my master classes, but to give you an idea on what you can do to get started. Basically business credit, one of the advantages of it is you're separating your personal from your business. Now there's a lot of advantages to doing that from a tax standpoint and from a liability standpoint. You absolutely wanna make sure that your businesses are totally separate. If you ever get into a lawsuit and you don't have it separated, you know, a person can come after you personally as well as your business. So you want to take steps to separate your personal from the business. The way that you do that first is your entity, right? A lot of people, I meet a lot of business owners that don't have everything set up <laughs> all at once. And I think that this pandemic has exposed a lot of us, right? where I had an entrepreneur come up to me and say, hey, I make $10,000, you know, a month. Um, can I get funding for my business? I said, sure. So I just asked her a few questions. I said, do you have your entity set up? She says, no, I haven't got around to that yet. I said, do you have your EIN? No, I don't. I said, do you have your revenue going to a business bank account? She said, no. Well, then right there, you don't qualify for funding. So we have to make sure as entrepreneurs, we are set up the correct way from the very beginning so that we are not leaving capital. We are not leaving money on the table. Right. So the way to get started, right, you want to make sure that, you know, you do your research on your business name, you know, making sure that, you know, no one has it. I, I had a business owner create an EIN, then go back to get an entity, found out the entity couldn't happen because someone else already had the name. And then now you got an EIN that's worthless. Right. So there's an order of operations when it comes to setting up your company correctly. But you got to make sure you got your name. You got to make sure you have your entity. And let me just say this, a sole proprietorship is not the best way to build business credit uh, because you haven't separated yourself from your entity. So from a liability standpoint, you know, someone can come after you personally and business-wise. So if you want to build business credit, you want to think about being a big business even though you're not. And one way to be a big business is to have an entity that separates you 
from you personally. And so you want to make sure that you have an S Corp or, you know, a C Corp or an LLC, right? You want to talk to an attorney to figure out what's the best one for you, but you got to make sure that entity is set up correctly. You got to make sure that your phone number is, you know, not a Google number, right? You need to have a phone number that, um, you know, that represents your business. You got to make sure that you have your um, your email address, right? I mean, it's simple things. It's small things that don't cost a lot of money and you got to set it up for your business anyway. So why not set it up the correct way from the very beginning? And so you have, you got you to gotta look at your business the way a lender or a creditor sees your business, even with your address, right? You don't want to have a PO box or a FedEx address. You can have that as a mailing address. Right. You don't want to have that as your physical address. So it's small things like that when we're setting up our company that can prevent you from getting capital. When it comes to getting business credit, there are lenders out here that will approve you if you have your entity set up and if you're listed on a 411 directory, right? They're not looking at your personal credit. Right. So let's say that maybe you had some challenges on the personal side. You know, maybe you had a bankruptcy, maybe you had a foreclosure, maybe you had some liens, maybe you had some judgments, maybe you had a job and lost it. Maybe you got sick for a number of months and, and couldn't maintain your bills, right? Life happens, things happen, and it, it affects us on the personal side. The great thing about business credit is no one sees that. No one sees your personal credit report. It is all based on your business credit and the steps you took to establish your business profile. And the one thing I want to mention is that business credit, anybody can look up your business credit report at any time. You know, it's not like the personal side where you got to give somebody your social security number and you have to, you know, give them authorization to view your report. My business credit report, a bank can look you up at any time. They just simply pay $40 to, to view. And let me give you an example of what's going on in this pandemic. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm like, you, you, you just flowing. I'm like, cause that's where I'm, 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 <laughs> I, you have to talk about, because there, I, would, I was on vacation in June, sitting with some great girlfriends of mine and her hubby, and we're just with some couples and talking about business, talking about politics, all that good stuff. And one of the things we talked about was the 10,000, that every business is able to get at least 10,000, you know what I mean? And right. he was like, you got yours, right, sis? I said, oh yeah, that was the first thing we did. We got that 10 grand immediately. And mm -hmm. because business is so good, I said, you know what? I said to my team, let's do a giveaway because with from this 10K, I can, let's bless some people because people are struggling. Women are struggling. When, black women, particularly in business, even though we're the quickest to get going and, and we're leading in being able to start businesses, we are leading in the less generating less revenue like we are at the bottom when it comes to the revenue so if people on this line have not received the ten thousand dollars at minimum it's a problem for me it's a problem for me and i'm like we need to talk about why why aren't you getting it and i'm sure even just from what you just said like we we haven't even been on a full 30 minutes but from the little things you just said making sure these things are correct. It's those little things that are causing these huge losses. The small foxes destroy the vine, <laughs> you know? And so we need to talk about it. So go ahead, flow right into pandemic. Talk about right. it. So, so I think that the pandemic exposed some of the issues that small business owners come across, right? 2020 was the year that we did not expect and we didn't anticipate and we can't always plan for things, right? So there's a lot of key takeaways from this 2020 pandemic. Um, one, a lot of entrepreneurs were not even set up appropriately to even apply for the government funding. Some of them didn't set up their entities, have their EINs, have a business bank account. Like those are the basics. Um, other things is we didn't have insurance, right? So we saw with the protests and with some of the looting that uh, some business owners did not have insurance. Now, granted, I understand it. If you were ordered to shut down for three months and you chose to cut off that expense because, hey, you're not open, you're not making any money. I totally understand that. But we got to make sure that in times like this and even in good times, we want to make sure that we have insurance and making sure that we have the insurance that can cover in these type of events because a lot of insurance policies exclude things such as looting and theft. And so you have to add a writer, you have to add different things to make sure that you're protected. Um, other key takeaways from that is some of us did not have our you know our credit together whether it was business credit or personal right um some of us you have to realize that whether we are in a recession or not people who have great credit are always going to have access to capital 
Mm -hmm. um, a lot of lenders right now, they stopped lending altogether when this pandemic happened. And the ones that still do, they change their requirements. They still want people with top credit scores. Um, those are the people or you know, when it comes to real estate loans, they required you to have more, more capital and when they're loan to income or they, their LTV was different. So it taught us that, you know, even regardless of what we're going through, we need to take care of that. So I always tell people, if your personal credit is not great, that's fine, accept it, acknowledge it, but work on your plan to improve that and build your business credit at the same time so that you can have access to capital on both sides. You know, you have double purchasing power. Yeah. Um, but we have, you know, e even like you mentioned with the, uh, the SBA loans, right? Some entrepreneurs just simply didn't apply early enough, right? Uh, and they changed the rules. In the beginning, if you applied early, you could get 10,000, right? But then they went back and changed the rules that it's $1,000 per employee, right? And so some of us just didn't even act quickly when it first came out and then in two yeah. weeks. And it was grant, it was grant money. You didn't have to pay, I don't have to pay it back. You exactly. know, so I'm like, no, I got us, I got a soul. I got a soul. I'm a giver. Naturally says I, I got to give and it breaks my heart to see like we're just so uninformed there's so much information there's so much technology there's so many amazing coaches and i think sometimes it's it's fear of and and there's fear there's trauma there's there's abuse i've mentioned um one of our members that paid thousands of dollars for just this process that was free so she doesn't even know certain things and i'm like you got to get that information from this individual that promised you to get your business credit built up and now you have you don't know anything or have anything you know that stuff breaks my heart you know okay. and so I, I just I <laughs> we, we we just we just got to do better we just got to do better you know and so at the end of the day can you share the process of how long you know yeah. it may take to build yeah. up your business credit um, and then, I, and then after that, I want to talk about some of the companies, even just from my experience that I went with to help build my credit. Okay. So I'm going to answer that in, in two folds. So, um, your question about how much does it cost now with Dun and Bradstreet, I just want to let everybody know, um, even though they're basically a business credit reporting agency, they also have commissioned salespeople. And so they're commissioned salespeople. They try to sell you on things that you don't need. So they'll say, once you apply to get your DUNS number, you'll get an email saying, hey, you know, you haven't set up your profile or there's something missing on your profile or we can help you get that 80 pay deck score, you know, for an extra $500. I talked to a business owner that spent $2,400 with Dun & Bradstreet. Um, to get things set up. You you really don't need it. If you're if you're applying for your EIN and they call you and try to talk you into something, just just politely tell them no or tell them you need to talk to your business partner or whatever. Just tell them, hey, I just want to get my dance number for right now. You do not have to sign up for any other services that Dun and Bradstreet offers. But just know that they do have commission salespeople that are trying to sell you on things that you can do uh, on your own. So your next question about how long does it take to build business credit? So industry experts say it could take two years, mm -hmm. right? If you really don't have a clue what you're doing. And so I have a program where I've broken that down to six months, okay? And so there's four levels to building business credit. The first level is credibility. And credibility is what we talked about earlier. That's making sure you have everything set up correctly so that you can get automated approvals when you start to build business credit. So things we talked about, your entity, your EIN, your business bank account, making sure you're listed with the 411 directory. There's a few others, but making sure that you are set up correctly from the very beginning, because here's what can happen with business credit. Remember I told you earlier, there are some lenders out here that will, will approve you as long as you are listed on the, um, the, your secretary of state and you're on the 411 directory. But, but here is a key piece. Everything has to match. Right, so if your company name is Five Star Inc. on the Secretary of State's website, and it's Five Star Incorporated on the 411 directory, that's an automatic denial, right? It has nothing to do with credit, nothing. You, you have to look like a big business online. So everything has to match, everything. If, if you got an ink, a period, a comma, if you spell out incorporated, if you abbreviate the word sweet, it has to match everywhere because they have their artificial intelligence out here verifying that you're a legitimate company. And if you got things, you, you know, not matching, then they don't see you as a legitimate company, right? When you see Walmart and Target 
you're never going to see their logos be a different color. You're never going to see their addresses, you know, not accurate or not match. And you got to look at yourself the same way because that's how lenders view you. So the first step in building business credit is credibility, making sure everything is set up appropriately. So when you do start to apply for vendor credit or tier credit, you can get approved. So then there's four levels to building business credit, right? Now, remember, it's like, it's like levels to it, right? When you first start off, you're not going to start off with some $20,000 visa credit. You're right. not, right? You're going right. to start off with vendor credit, which is not sexy. It's not a ton of money, right? But, but it's going to get you started. You got to look at the end goal here. The goal is to get multiple, you know, lines of credit for your business that your business qualify for, but you got to start somewhere. So I always look at it like school, right? First, you start with, with kindergarten, right? You got elementary school, you got middle school, you got high school and then once you graduate from college you'll get that job right mm -hmm. business credit is the same way so tier one is kind of your vendor credit uh companies like granger or quill or uline right these are companies that will extend a credit line to you but i, I want to be clear a credit line is not a credit card that you can go charge up it's right. basically saying you can purchase from us and we will give you some time to pay for it so they can give you 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. So net, net 30, net 60, net 90, meaning you need to pay your company invoices by that time frame, And that's how your score is judged, right? On the business credit side. So if you pay, if they give you a net 30 account, meaning you can purchase something from them, you'll get it within 30 days. You have to pay it within that time. That's going to help you build your business credit score up. So you start with tier one, which is kind of like your, your smaller suppliers and vendors. Uh, tier two is, you know, you're kind of moving on to retail credit, you know, like Amazon, you know, Home Depot, places that, that, like that. And you're moving into, you know, tier three. A lot of people don't know that you can get a company car with your EIN. It's not attached to you uh, personally. And then like level four, that's kind of like your revolving credit cards where you get your MasterCards and your visas that your business qualified for on its own. That's not attached to you personally, right? So the process of business credit is, you know, going through the levels, right? Knowing the vendors to go through for each level because 97% of vendors don't report to the business credit bureaus and they don't report to each agency. So you need to know the order in which to go in. You need to know which vendors to go in with each tier. And in at the end, you're, you can qualify, that's when you can qualify for business loans and business lines of credit. Okay, so generally, yeah, it could take a year or two if you don't know what you're doing. And let me give you another reason why it takes so long. It normally takes vendors anywhere between 30 and 90 days to report your payment history. And you can't move on to the next tier unless you got three or four trade lines reporting. Mm -hmm. So imagine you purchase something in April, you pay for it, they may not report your payment to up to 90 days. That's a long time. So building business credit takes time. There is no shortcut. Well, let me say this. The only other way to get business credit faster is if you have a 700 score across all three credit bureaus. You have a 700 score across all three credit bureaus, you can get business credit cards in two weeks, right? If you don't, then you go the, the other way, build it with your EIN, but it takes time. And I don't like to like sugarcoat that process. There's no way to speed that up. Uh, it takes time because it takes them a while to report your payment history. But mm -hmm. in the meantime, you're still adding more trade lines uh, to help build your business credit and get you a high credit score. So good. So, so good. This stuff is so yummy to my soul. Listen, so um, for us personally, we, we got our DUNS number. We started with Staples. Mm -hmm. um, Quill. Mm -hmm. T-Mobile was mm -hmm. another one that was willing to um, use our EIN and Dunn's number. So, and just like she said, Dunn's will call you. They will have reps call you and, and say, we want to get your trade lines going. We want to get you doing this. It'll be this rate. It'll be that rate. But we didn't do that. We decided to work the process ourselves as a small business and, and not put the money 
into doing something we knew we would be able to do for ourselves and then work with individuals like Latoya to get the information and that process to know we were doing it the right way. Um, so we started that some years ago. So when this opportunity came around and now I pride myself on not having any debt and the only time I would get debt is when I knew I was going to flip that thing. You know what I mean? Like I know right now I have a, I have a demand and therefore because I have the demand and I, I have people needing more, now I know for sure I can go ahead and do this or do that. And so um, I, I really am just so appreciative. Uh, I see people in the chat, valuable information, so informative, valuable information, like they're just eating it up. Um, so those are some of the companies I wanted to talk about um, with that we did, we use personally that you ladies can look up um, and check out as well. You talked about the process. You talked about how long it can potentially take. Um, now, as far as where we are with the pandemic and what's happening in the middle of COVID with the new changes, what can they do now? What are some steps they can take now? Um, maybe they didn't know about it. Maybe, you know, that they, they missed it or they didn't get in early enough. What are some things that these amazing women can do right now um, to, to access any grants that may be out there, to access any funding that may be out there? Great question. So I'm going to talk about uh, the SBA information and talk about grants and then talk about business credit. So if you have not taken advantage of SBA, SBA offers two programs to help entrepreneurs um, they are still available. So if you did not get a chance to participate, you still can. You can go to sba.gov. They actually have four different uh, ways that they can help entrepreneurs. But the top two programs is the EIDL loan. The EIDL loan stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And typically, it was a loan that applied to like hurricanes and tornadoes. But they've used that in this situation to say, if your business has been impacted by COVID, you could take advantage of that. So with EIDL, there's two parts to it. There's a $10,000 grant, and then there's also a loan, okay? Now, when it first came out, businesses could get up to 10K. Two weeks later, once money ran out, it was $1,000 per employee. So you can still take advantage of that, but let me define employee. So employee means uh, W-2. Okay, if you have employees that are 1099, you can't include them in the EIDL number because they can apply by themselves. Right. Okay, so you can still go to sba.gov. There's a link that says coronavirus. You can click on that. It'll bring up the four options. And the second one, I believe, says $10,000 grant. You can fill that out. It's a 10-minute application. It's very, very simple. Um, that now, there is a box right before the end of the application. There's a box and it says, do you want to you know, apply for the $10,000 grant. You have to check that box. If you don't check that box, then you're simply applying for a loan. Okay, so EIDL is one application for two products, right? Now you can get one, one or the other or both, meaning you could get a $10,000 grant or you can get a loan up to 150,000 or you can get both. Some people accept the grant and deny the loan. Some people get the loan and deny the grant. Now there's many different terms to it too. So you wanna make sure you review that information. Cause I saw some people got, you know, 2.5% for 30 years. I, I saw some other people that got, you know, five years. So you really wanna make sure you read the terms and conditions. So for the um, EIDL loan, you go to sba.gov and you click on the coronavirus resources and you can click on the $10,000 grant and apply for that. It takes 10 minutes. Um, people have been getting their money in about a week. Um, and so that's one option. If you want the loan part of it, um, you know, just complete that application. And if you're approved or denied, they will send you an email either way. Now, when this first rolled out, it took forever. But here lately, they have been getting back to people within a reasonable time frame. Now, the other resource from SBA is payroll protection. And payroll protection is basically... Um, a way for you to get a loan based on payroll. So um, what they do is they basically take your average payroll and times that by 2.5% um, to determine how much they can pay you. Now, first there was like this eight week 
time frame to use it, but now it's like 24 weeks, I believe. They have changed these rules over time. Um, but if you have employees, not the 1099 ones, but the um, W-2 W two employees, and you know you, you have proof of all of that because you don't want to go to jail for fraud, um, you know, you can figure out what your, your, your average monthly payroll is times that by 2.5%. You do have to fill out some more paperwork. Now with payroll protection, you have to go to an authorized lender or, or participating. So some big banks were offering it. Some small banks were offering it. A bunch of small companies like Divi and PayPal and Square, they were all offering payroll protection. Um, payroll protection ended June 30th, but they just extended it to the end of um, August. So you can still take advantage of that. One thing I would say is that the small companies kind of felt like the big banks were catering to larger businesses. Yeah. So they found more success with smaller banks or credit unions. So you want to, you may want to look into that. Like I said, a lot of lenders that I work with for, for business lines of credits and loans, they stopped their funding process altogether to simply process payroll protection loans because they were making way more off the processing fees than they make on their lending products. They were getting 10 years worth of leads within two months. Um, so just look into those companies because for that application, you have to fill out an application. You can go to sba.gov to complete the application, but you have to submit it through an SBA approved lender and then they submit it to SBA. So that's another program that you can take advantage of. Um, for independent contractors, 1099, so proprietorships, real estate investors, um, you all can take advantage of EIDL too, as long as your you know company and everything was set up prior to January 2020. Uh, if you are a 1099, you do Uber, you do Lyft, you do Hair, you you are a realtor. You could take advantage of those too. You can also take advantage of unemployment. Before, uh, yes, pay, payroll PPP was extended through the end of August. Okay. I'm not mistaken. Um, you can also apply for unemployment insurance. Uh, really. Typically in the past, unemployment was for, you know, people who lost a job. But with this pandemic, if you are, you know, 1099, independent contractors, you know, sole proprietor, you could take advantage of unemployment insurance. Um, on a federal level from the CARES Act, they were giving away $600 per week, plus you get state level, which is 300. I know some entrepreneurs are getting like $1,500 every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, the federal part is supposed to end at the end of July, but I heard it may extend. So you may want to look into that as well, you know, like take advantage of these programs, ELDI, payroll protection, unemployment, take advantage of that. Outside of that, um, I would recommend building your business credit because you want to look at business credit as having, um, you know, lines, you want to look at it as like your emergency line, like having access to multiple lines of liquidity when your money, when your business needed, right? Well, a lot of businesses shut down, they still had to pay a mortgage, still had to pay rent, you know, just because they shut down doesn't mean your all your bills got taken away. So you want to work on building business credit so that, you know, if you need to tap into it, you can. And again, it's a process. Uh, lenders like to give you money when you don't need it. So work on work on it now if you don't so that when you do need it, it it's there for you. Um, I would also recommend, you know, personal credit repair. I'll always recommend that, um, doing that at the same time. But those are some of the biggest things that I would look into. And also grants. There are so many grants available right yeah. now. That's the biggest part I wanted you to, to yeah. get to as well. Yeah, there are so many grants available right now. One, because there's a lot of businesses that want to give back to help out with this pandemic. Yeah. There's also businesses that's putting their money where their mouth is when it comes to this whole protest. Yes. You know, a lot of corporations did not know how to show their support for the movement, and now they are offering grants to minority businesses. So there is so much money out here available, and, you know, I always tell people, apply, you know, and if they say no, let them say no. Don't, don't not get the grant because you didn't apply. So, um, you know, for those who's on my email list, you know, I'm always sending out resources, whether it's grants, funding tips. Uh, business credit tips to keep you informed, like 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 the woman who you know asked the banker. Like the bank is not the only place to get money. There's a lot of other lenders out here that can, that can help you, regardless of you know what type of industry uh, you're in. So it's it's a lot of grants available for for us to apply for at this time. So I love it. Thank you so much. I'm I'm excited. 
um, for them to get this information and to just really be in a different position this time next year. Um, that, that is, that's what I, I want to hear the testimonies that come from them just getting this, you know, basic information to get started. So I'm excited about that. You know, I, I want to go back to something I meant to ask you even in the beginning was even now just about your entrepreneurial journey and, and just how you got started with it all. Like what made you get into, um, this line of work? Uh, you know, what was the process? Great question. Um, this all started, well, let me go back. Okay. So I'm originally from Ohio. I came from a very poor family. Okay. Very poor. Raised by a single mom. Dad died when I was two from cancer. Um, but I always knew I wanted more for my life, even though I didn't know what that would be. You know, went to college, um, got a business degree. And I bring that up, not to brag, but to say, you would think that with a business degree, they would teach you about business credit. They don't. Like if, if the number one reason why businesses fail is because we run out of money or we don't have access to capital, you would think that would, they would teach that in, a, in an educational program, but they don't. I didn't learn about real estate. I mean, I didn't learn about business credit and funding until I got into real estate. So anyways, I graduated from college. And when I was in college, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, oh, I want to get into real estate. So, but at the time, you know, you're broke, poor college student. I had no idea how I was going to get into that. And I just graduated and got a job um, in corporate America. I did business to business sales for about 15 years. Um, and I had a job that moved me from Ohio to DC. I used to work for Michelin. I used to sell uh, tires to um, car dealerships, Ford, GM, Sam's, independent tire dealers. And they moved me from Ohio to DC. And once I moved to DC, I was like, I'm finally going to get into real estate like 14 years after I decided <laughs> I'm finally going to get into real estate. So I got my license. I was an agent with uh, Long and Foster Realtors and I would help a lot of investors. And when I would, you know, go to closing and look at the HUD one statement, my commission would be like, okay, 5,000, but I got to split a portion of that with my broker. And then the, the investor was walking away with like $50,000 profit. I was like, I don't want to be an agent anymore. I want to be an investor. So, um, but unfortunately my job relocated Well, I got a promotion, moved me from uh, the DC area to the Chicago area. And when you move states, your license doesn't transfer. So it was either go back to school to get my real estate license or um, do what I really want to do, which was be an investor. And so, um, I couldn't get my real estate license at the time because my job had me traveling. I had covered three states for, for sales. So I was just like, I can't show a home if I'm in Michigan or Indiana. So I was like, I'm going to learn how to be an investor. So I just got educated, started going to workshops, seminars, reading books, just all interested in it. And I partnered with some people in over a five year period, we raised over $2 million and we raised it through a variety of ways. So 350,000 of that was business credit, you know, uh, and remember there's two ways to do business credit. You got the 700 score, you can get funding in two weeks, which is what I did. I got $40,000 within two weeks. I was only in business two months, but you can also get it by building business credit with your EIN. Did that too. Also, you know, had hard money loans. Also did you use 401ks, IRAs, also did, um, you know, partnering with investors to raise funds for deals, uh, learning about other lenders who had different types of funding that you just traditionally don't learn about. And so the inspiration for this company came when I went to that event with that young lady and she was asking what's a Dunn's number and how, how do I use that to get capital for my business? And then it just dawned on me, like in real estate, at least here in Chicago, we pretty much know about all the various types of funding available. <laughs> But it, it clicked that, you know, maybe in a different industry, entrepreneurs may not know about other lenders or other types of capital other than a bank. And so that's why I started this company, because I want to educate people on the different type of funding that's available for entrepreneurs. I don't want you leaving any money on the table. So it's not just about building business credit with your EIN. There's revenue loans. There's, you know, there's so many different types of funding. And I want to educate people on that so that they don't leave any money on the table and they can get access to capital, too. Yeah, it, it's so funny. Um, my son has workouts and he and his um, buddies were in here this morning. I was trying to shush them all and stuff like that. They had the dog barking. That was that little like noise in my background with everyone home. But um, they were reading something. I was overhearing them while I was preparing today. And they were uh, reading about 90% of the millionaires that we've seen in America were tied to real estate. You know what I mean? A majority of them are tied to real estate. And so I'm 
glad you even brought that up. That's where that's that's the Latoya I know. <laughs> yeah, that's where the I one buying, yep, buying and flipping, her and the hubby traveling, buying, flipping. You know, teaching people mm -hmm. how to get buy back the block. That's the Latoya I know. So when I saw you expanded into this space, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, we got to have her on. All right, so let's get a question. We have one from Tarika. We're going to. Um, unmute um, her real quickly so she can ask her question once I find her button. <laughs> All right, Tarika, we can hear you. Uh, hi, first I want to say thank you so much CEO Chicks for uh, giving us this knowledge. Um, it, oh my God, like I'm so, I got my little handy name notebook here trying to take notes and all. Um, and also to you, Ms. Jackson, for being so willing to serve and come on and educate us because I, for one, you know, as an um, entrepreneur and, you know, trying to handle law myself, I need this. So I want to get straight into my question. The mm -hmm. guns, like, I want to know where can I find this application? Um, is there a particular link? Is it online? Uh, do I go through you, Ms. Jackson? Like, where can I find this DUNS number? Because I definitely need to tap into this business credit as soon as possible. So Dun & Bradstreet does have a website. You wanna make sure you go to the correct one. Uh, when you type in Dun & Bradstreet, it's generally the first one that comes up, but there are some imitation ones out there. So you wanna make sure that you go to the right website. And when you go in there, First, you can look to see if your company is already listed because sometimes if you have made a purchase with your EIN or with your business, sometimes you already have one set up and you don't even have to set one up. You may not even know that you have one. But if you don't, you do a company search, you don't see that you already have one, it will walk you through the steps on how to create your DUNS number. You'll do the application, it'll ask for some basic company information, and then you'll get an email. And generally, they say it takes up to 30 days, but you'll generally get it in about seven days. Um, if you need it sooner than that, they do have a fee to expedite it. I think it's $49, um, but you know, you only have to do that if it's like an emergency. Like sometimes if you're applying for a grant and you're working with the government, you have to have that number ASAP. You may wanna go that right to expedite it. But if not, if you can wait seven days, you'll get an email within seven days with your DUNS number. But beware, you will get an email and a phone call from their sales rep. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sell you other products and services that you don't need. Um, and they will also send you a postcard to try to get you to sign up for their services as well. So yeah, awesome. Thank, uh, you thank, you for, thank you for the warning. I'll be looking out for them. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you for the warning. Tatiana, you can unmute. You are next. After that, we have Asha and then Kim. All right, thank you so much, Latoya, for this amazing content that you shared. And I echo um, what Tashe said. Uh, thank you to the CEO chick. So I had a couple of questions, but I'm just gonna choose one right now. <laughs> my, my question is, um, so you had mentioned EIN and, um, and all of that. So I have an LLC and I have DBAs, but with my EIN, it's under the first um, DBA. So I'm trying to figure out like, do I need to change it? Is there a way to change the EIN to reflect the new DBA that I'm doing? Is that even possible? Since you said that some of those business funding entities, they, if something is off, then it, it can throw the application away. Good question. So I want to make sure I understand. So you have, what is your regular entity? Is it a sole proprietorship? S it's an L LLC. Okay, you have an LLC and you're saying you have a DBA for your LLC. Yes, yeah, so there's one DBA under that LLC, but I'm, I have another DBA. That, that's the one that the second one is where I'm going to be doing most of the business um, funding for. Is that DBA connected to this LLC also? Yes. Okay, then you don't need to set up a separate LLC. Right. Okay, so I don't need to set up a separate EIN for it? No. Okay. If it's legally under mm -hmm. your entity, then you don't need to set up a, a separate um, EIN. If you had another entity, then and you know a DBA with that, then you'll need an EIN. But if you have it underneath that LLC, then you don't need an additional EIN. You can use the one that you have for your LLC to start your business. Credit. All right. And when you, but and just to be clear too, Latoya, when she files, she doesn't file with the DBA. She files with the LLC's information. Correct. 
Correct. Now, when you set up your profile, they'll ask if you have a DBA. You can list that, but you're really going to be building business credit with your LLC. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. That's a great question. And it saved you some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we do it? <laughs> Be like, girl, you got all these EINs, why? <laughs> Thank you, awesome question, awesome question. Let's go to next in line, Asha. Hey, thank you again um, for doing this. I really appreciate all this awesome information. Um, I recently started my business, and so um, a lot of the things as far as credibility is concerned, I have taken care of. But when it comes to um, the grants and, and what the SBA is offering, is that available to new businesses, even though um, my LLC was originally opened in 2016, um, but I just reinstated it recently? Good question. Um, for SBA, for the EIDL and payroll protection, the entity had to be started prior to January 2020. So if there was no activity in that in that entity before that date, then you won't be able to apply for those. Uh, when it comes to grants, each grant has different qualifications. There's grants out there for startups, new entrepreneurs, or if you are, like you said, reestablishing from an a older company. Um, but you just have to read the guidelines and the requirements because each grant is different. Some of them will require you to be in business two years. Some of them can be a startup. Some of them require you to have X amount of revenue in, in order mm -hmm. to qualify. So you just have to just make sure you read the uh, requirements for the loan. But I do um, share that, uh, you know, on my email list. I generally will send out um, emails with, you know, upcoming grants. And so you can always click on the link to get the details as to what you know, to see if your business qualifies for that particular grant. But there's all different types of grants from all different companies, individuals, and organizations. And there's definitely some out there. It definitely doesn't have to be a startup or it doesn't matter if you, you know, had a business years ago and are now reactivating it. But specifically for S SBA and EIDL, it, you had to have activity in 2019. There's a certain period and time frame that you have to be eligible for in order to apply. Okay, thank you. And I'll be joining your email list. Yes. <laughs> we all need to join the email list. Yes. yes, it's important to stay in tune and um, just aware of what's happening. All right, we have Kim. You can unmute and ask your question. You there, Kim? Let's see. Kim, okay, let's go to next in line. I don't know if she got it. I don't see her. Who's next after Kim? Daisha. Daisha or Dasha? Just unmute your line. You guys can do it on your end. Hi, it's Daisha. Hey, Daisha. Hello. Um, just thank you so much for the information that you gave, especially as far as the business credit. Um, my question is, I already have my Dun and Bradstreet number. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, like, what are some of the first steps I could take to uh, start business credit? Well, good thing you've already created your Dun's number. That's a wonderful thing. So that means your business credit profile is activated with Dun and Bradstreet. Um, you do want to make sure that your profile, you have a profile with Experian and Equifax, uh, but I do teach that in my courses, you know, the next steps on what to do to build business credit. Um, and even though you have your duns, you want to make sure everything else is correct too. Remember, if anything is misspelled or, you know, not set up appropriately, you don't want to get a bunch of automatic denials. So um, you want to make sure that you know, you have a profile established with Experian and Equifax, and then you can start to uh, build business credit with tier one lenders. Um, but I provide more of that information in my courses where, you know, you get the list of lenders for each tier, you'll see what their requirements are in order to be approved and how to actually complete the application. So in our programs, I teach how to do that. But if you already have your profile, that's great. You know, make sure that, you know, you're set up with the other two as well. And then you can start to apply for tier one vendor credit. Awesome. Thank you. 
You're welcome. You're very great. Okay, Kim, I think we have her ready, right? You unmute, Kim. You yes. are last question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, I have the um, done number and I have all that, but when applying for like the loans, um, they were going by credit. So I'm not sure, maybe I must have checked the wrong um, the button or you say you had to make sure that you check a certain button because they were, they, it was a denial based off of um, credit, not off of like, they didn't send anything else. Um, and I do have credit line, but um, I guess some of the machines and things, they do not report to credit bureau so i have a whole bunch of business um lines of credit but apparently um they have never been reporting so it's just like i don't have any credit so when i'm trying to apply for business credit it's it's just hard because i don't i have it but they're not reporting got it okay so it's a, it's a couple of questions within that question so when you say that you're getting denied is that from the sba loan the eidl loan um, on the top of it, it says SBA. Um, I applied like when it first started um, because I, I honestly don't know which is the difference. So I applied for like all of them um, and they they sent me, you know, an email back and it, it stated for credit, like it, it stated right. um, it, for credit wise. Got it. So, so let me answer that question. When you apply for uh, EIDL, it's a grant and a loan. The grant does not look at your credit. The loan does. Okay. So you can get denied based on personal credit score on the loan part of EIDL. Okay. On the grant side, they don't look at your credit. So it just okay. depends on, you know, when you filled out that application, you were applying for a loan. And so they will look at your, your personal credit score to determine whether they can qualify you for a loan. If you didn't check that check mark, then you didn't apply for the grant. Okay. Do you, do you know? Or then, and so when you talk about, so that's for the, the SBA loan and grant for EIDL. When it comes to business credit, 97% of vendors do not report to the business credit bureaus. 97%. So you have to apply with the ones that do actually report. And you need to know which ones they report to because not all of them report to all three. Some report just to experience, some report to Equifax, some just report to Dun & Bradstreet. So I've heard that happen before. I knew a business owner who had a, a beauty business for business 20 years working with vendors and none of them applied, none of them reported to her business credit report. You know, so it's like you have to know which vendors actually report to the business credit bureau because you don't want to working to build all this business credit and you realize you're not getting credit they're not reporting to the business credit bureaus and it's not affecting your business credit score so you have to know which ones report it sounds like the vendors that you have worked with they don't report so yeah. you, have, you have to work with the ones that do and with that being said thank you so much kim thank you everyone for the engagement and for the amazing questions i don't want to keep latoya too long but you guys need to connect with her so latoya give us the information to where they can you know get plugged in find out about your courses and get them on track when it comes to their business credit well, uh, I, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you for inviting me to be on here with all of the wonderful CEOs. I'm grateful and thankful for this opportunity. Who knew when we met several years ago that this is where we would be today. So again, thank you for this. Um, if anybody wants to connect, uh, be sure to follow me on social media um, with Excel Capital Group. Uh, we are on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, I go live every single Friday at 12 p.m. Central Time talking about different business credit and funding topics. Um, I won't be live this Friday because I'm going out of town. But after that, I go live every single Friday, 12 p.m. Central Time, answering your questions, giving you advice and tips on funding and business credit. Um, if you want to, you can go to my website, which is excelcapitalgroupllc.com. You can join our email list. Um, I normally send out information on grants, 
funding, business credit. Um, so you'll always be, you know, in the know when it comes to that stuff. Um, I also have, you know, upcoming webinars on, you know, business credit and, and how you can get started. So I would recommend to join the email list on the website, or you can always send me an email, uh, which is info at excelcapitalgroupllc.com. So. Awesome, awesome. And I know you're working up some specials for CEO Chicks. Make sure you yes. tell her you are on this yes. call. Um, and just get plugged in. Let, let's be in a better position this time next year. And let me tell you, for those of you that are joining for the first time, we have new members on here. We have women that um, we opened up this call uh, just for the month of July, all of our Mondays. But I do not play when it comes to the people I bring on these calls. And my due diligence, it, 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 it can be trusted, you know? And so I want you guys to take a look at what she has available. I've followed her business for years. So, and she's still here. She has receipts and she has a track record. So that, that is so important to me um, that we're not taking advantage of. But again, um, thank you so much, Latoya, for being on. This was absolutely amazing. Um, for those of you that have not yet submitted your videos and for the giveaway, please do so. Please continue to share. We are just getting started and we are gonna continue to just um, bless as many people as we can, give as many people the information that they need to not just survive during this pandemic, but thrive. All right. Thank you all so much for being on. Latoya, thank you again. God bless you, your ministry, your business, your marriage, your family, all that. Stay safe, you guys. Wash your hands. Put on your mask. Make sure we have a mask. It's under 20 bucks, free shipping. Make sure you get it. It comes with two filters. Really, really comfortable. You can grab a mask from us if you choose. So, But love you guys. If you have any questions, always email us. Let us know. Um, and we're, we're just here to serve. So thank you all for being on. And you have an amazing rest of the week. And we will see you guys at another time. Bye. I unmuted you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye, Bye, Bye ladies. Bye. Later. Oh, I hear the babies in the background. <laughs>